Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Signs to restrict, signs to limit, signs to control and prevent. Visual messages that require voluntary compliance designed for our own protection. But when it comes to our water supply, there are no signs that tell society how to protect such an important resource. This responsibility falls on the wastewater treatment plant operator. The treatment plant operator is the gatekeeper of the influent of the plant and the protector of the downstream user. The plant operator does not transform wastewater into pure water, for the water was never really pure the first time around. Pure water is a combination of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, known as H2O. But even our freshest water from the purest streams, the clearest rain, and the whitest snow contains natural minerals, gases, and other impurities that are considered normal and sometimes even beneficial to the water supply. Wastewater also has a variety of ingredients that plant operators must address. Two major types of waste material found in wastewater are organic and inorganic wastes. Organic wastes come from domestic sources as well as from certain industries such as vegetable, fruit, meat, dairy, and poultry plants. Inorganic wastes such as sand, salt, iron, and calcium will also be found in domestic wastewater. Inorganic wastes are chemical substances or of mineral origin. Industrial wastewaters can contain substances such as lead, chromium, copper, and a variety of other metals and compounds which are very toxic to aquatic and human life. Two other major types of pollutants found in wastewater are neither organic or inorganic. They are thermal and radioactive wastes. These wastes require special handling and are usually controlled or pre-treated at the source. Wastewater also contains copious amounts of solids. These solids form sludge, known today as biosolids, and also scum, which promote odors and oxygen depletion. However, the primary treatment units at the treatment plant are used to remove the biosolids and scum before they ever reach the receiving waters. This is accomplished by slowing the velocity of the wastewater flowing through the primary clarifier, which allows biosolids to settle to the bottom and the scum or floating solids to accumulate on the surface of the clarifier. Some treatment plants, such as package plants, may not have a primary treatment stage. In this case, both primary and secondary treatment are achieved in the same process. Most living creatures need oxygen to survive, and most aquatic creatures that need oxygen to survive must use oxygen that is mixed with water, known as dissolved oxygen. When wastes are discharged to receiving waters, bacteria begin to feed on and decompose the wastes. These bacteria are called aerobic bacteria, and they consume dissolved oxygen. They reproduce rapidly and can eventually use the entire supply of oxygen from the water faster than it can be naturally replenished. When this happens, fish and other living things that require dissolved oxygen die. Another result of oxygen depletion is foul odor. This is due in part to anaerobic bacteria. These bacteria obtain their oxygen by breaking down chemical compounds, such as sulfate, which is the source of the pungent, rotten egg odor. Therefore, oxygen-demanding pollutants must be removed in the treatment process in order to maintain acceptable levels of dissolved oxygen in the effluent and the receiving stream. This is accomplished by the secondary treatment stage, 
which is commonly a biological process used to stabilize and remove organic pollutants. In doing so, the level of organic pollutants and their insatiable demand for dissolved oxygen is dramatically reduced. Most bacteria found in wastewater are not harmful and die off during the mechanical and biological stages of treatment. However, bacteria originating from communicable human diseases and viruses can remain in sufficient numbers and potentially cause widespread illness. These bacteria are called pathogenic organisms and their elimination is achieved with the disinfection processes. The most common disinfection processes used today are chlorination, ozone, and ultraviolet light. Proper disinfection will result in a thorough kill of pathogenic bacteria in the treated wastewater. But even a safe, well-treated effluent can appear unattractive if its color and clarity is not similar to the receiving water. An accepted measurement of a waste's acid or basic condition is its pH. Before effluent is discharged, it should have a pH similar to that of the receiving water. Most commonly, NPDES permits call for an effluent pH of between 6.0 and 9.0. You now know that one of the primary functions of a treatment plant is the removal of solids from wastewater. If we took a sample of wastewater and evaporated all the water, the remaining residue would be the total solids concentration contained in the original sample. This solid residue contains both dissolved and suspended solids. How much is dissolved and how much is suspended? If you took another sample of wastewater, but this time filter through a fine mesh filter, the suspended solids will be caught in the filter and the dissolved solids will pass through with the water. Now, suspended solids are composed of two parts. Settleable solids that will generally settle out when the wastewater velocity is slowed in the primary treatment process, and non-settleable solids, also referred to as colloidal solids, that must be removed by some form of secondary treatment. Settleable and non-settleable solids are categorized depending on size, shape, and weight. Large particles will generally settle faster than smaller particles. Plant operators need to estimate settleable solids in order to properly operate clarifiers, biosolids pumps, and biosolids handling facilities. A device called an Imhoff cone can be used to roughly measure settleable solids. The Imhoff cone test, in conjunction with the suspended solids test, can assist the treatment plant operator with calculations on solids proportions on plant performance. No matter what the solid, it is either organic or inorganic and untreated organic solids can be harmful to receiving waters. And then there are floatable solids. If they appear in the effluent, they are not only unsightly, but indicate the presence of inadequately treated wastewater. Wastewater discharged into a receiving stream may upset natural cycles that occur in the receiving stream. Natural cycles of concern to the plant operator are the transpiration cycle and a variety of nutrient cycles. Transpiration is the purification cycle that starts with evaporation to condensation to precipitation to runoff to make one complete cycle. Nutrient cycles include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, and phosphorus. These cycles are very complex and involve chemical changes in living organisms. All nutrients have their own cycles, yet each cycle is influenced by other cycles. 
Chapter two of the manual discusses the nitrogen cycle in detail. The consequences of a disrupted nitrogen cycle alone can result in the receiving waters becoming septic. Septic waters have become oxygen depleted. They emit strong odorous gases and are extremely unsightly. This is a clear example why an operator must monitor the effluent and understand how natural cycles can be affected. The key to reducing pollution or pollution prevention is to eliminate or reduce pollution at its source. Most publicly owned treatment plants are designed to treat domestic wastewater, not industrial pollutants such as chemicals, thinners, paints, oils, acids, and pesticides. All treatment plants that have a capacity of 5 million gallons per day or greater are required to have and enforce a municipal industrial pretreatment program. Pretreatment programs require industrial and commercial users of a municipal sewer system to pretreat wastes to an acceptable level before discharging into the municipal sewer system. Municipal treatment plants can be affected adversely by industrial wastes. We will define industrial wastes simply by saying any non-domestic waste is an industrial waste. Industrial pollutants may include strong organic wastes from a dairy or other food processing facility. Chemical substances or cleaners, heavy metals, oils, toxic substances, thermal pollution, radioactive materials, and inorganic wastes. Any of these substances could interfere with or pass through a municipal treatment system, thus causing a potential serious hazard for both aquatic and human users downstream. Facilities that have a capacity of less than 5 million gallons per day may also be required to have a pretreatment program if deemed necessary by state or federal regulatory agencies. Even those treatment facilities that do not have pretreatment requirements generally have sewer use ordinances that limit the type and amount of industrial waste that may enter the sewer system. It is the responsibility of the NPDES permit holder to regulate the wastes that are dumped into the sewer system. Elimination of objectionable pollutants should be a goal. And when elimination is absolutely not possible, the substance should be minimized to the greatest extent possible. Plant operators are frequently called upon to help educate the public in controlling sources of pollution and their impact on the treatment facility. Both industrial and household hazardous wastes can have an adverse impact on a treatment plant and ultimately the receiving waters. But again, there are no signs to warn against wastewater abuse. Only the sign of trouble in untreatable wastes at the plant headworks.